welcome to another episode of Active Quest. Um, this is Josh Nichols, and I am joined by Chris Penwell. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. Uh, it's been fun going through all this E3 coverage together. Um, we've uh, done a lot of coverage. Um, this is um, our last main episode, so if you're listening to this one and you're interested in other coverage, we did cover uh, Bethesda, we covered Nintendo, uh, we covered Xbox, and yeah. uh, now we're covering... Unfortunately... Yeah, unfortunately, you didn't cover the other ones just because of um, time and life stuff. You know? Yeah, so, time constraints. And <laughs> sorry then also, about that. we didn't think that those conferences were like, um, there wasn't a, a, enough announced necessarily to warrant, you know, doing a whole episode. Um, even this one, we're consolidating Ubisoft and Square Enix uh, together because yeah. there was like almost enough to a full episode uh, for Ubisoft, not quite. And then Square, there definitely was. So we thought we'd just put them together. Um, so yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get right into it. favorite shows but there's still some stuff worth talking about <laughs> um yeah yeah for the sure. opening was definitely great um they did a like a, an orchestra playing a bunch of assassin's creed music and then kind of announced that they're doing um you know an assassin's creed like orchestra like tour so that's pretty exciting kind of an um odd e3 announcement but like it's you know it's cool for what it is they've, they've already announced um that the symphony is going on but it was a nice kind of like preview of what to expect yeah so. yeah and i guess i can't think of a better place to show that off you know yeah so um yeah i, I think it was just felt a weird way to open for me maybe they could have like in the middle i don't know but yeah. um yeah so uh let's just get right into it so um they started off with um watchdogs i believe right yeah, Watch, yeah Dogs. Watch Dogs Legion, which is the that's it. Yeah, newest Watch Dogs game, and uh, it looks it looks pretty good. I'm very excited for that. That was honestly the, the biggest thing at the conference that was exciting for me, and they showed off a lot of it. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks really. That's great. the way you show off a game, game devs. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, that was enough a... of the goddamn CG bullshit. Yeah, because they actually... I'm fucking done with it. Yeah, I am so done. Yeah, we got I'm so done with it. Way that. too many CGI trailers this 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 year. Um, so it was nice seeing Nintendo and uh bethesda and um ubisoft and square um yeah xbox a little bit but not really but yeah the other ones mostly all mm -hmm. did you know gameplay and that, that that's how to do it and here here's my take and chris think you agree with me if you don't really have any gameplay to show just tell us you're working on this game and you're nothing to show yeah um or yeah, exactly or it's like better uh, than just doing the cg and boring us yeah or bayonetta <laughs> like, 3 for me you know where they just show the logo yeah. quick little video metroid prime 4 yeah you know you don't need to show us four minutes of CGI. Like we we know that you're making the game. And that's all we need to know. It's, exactly. it's even worse when it drones on and on and on. Because the whole time we're just but, like, this isn't gameplay. Please stop. <laughs> but to get back to Watch Dogs Legion, I, I think this was the best way to announce it. Like before, I wasn't interested in the Watch Dogs game, you know. Yeah. But the hook is so interesting. It's like you can enlist anyone you see. Like any of the NPCs and have them join your um, your uh, faction. Yeah. So it's really cool to see that, and each these people have a specific personalities, which is really cool. And there's permadeath, so you ha there's consequences to your actions in this game, and that's the best. That's when gaming is at its best when there's stakes. Uh, so that's great. Uh, and uh, we have to mention Helen. Helen is amazing. <laughs> She's a great character. Yeah. Uh, and it showed Ubisoft's quirky side where, like, you see this old um, kind of pensioner <laughs> trying to... Um, just, just hacking the police and uh, finding files and being sneaky and uh, tasing, or, tasing police officers, which is really funny. Uh, <laughs> right? So... Um, don't do that in real life, by the way, but just saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks really uh, fun, and it's coming out pretty... I mean, not not like soon, soon, but Mar March 6th. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's not too far off. And that's a good spot to put it, I think, because the holiday lineup and, uh, you know, um, fall releases this year are pretty crowded. So, um, not yeah. just for and sales, but also for our time. That's a good spot to put it. And before E3, I never thought I'd say Watch Dogs is one of my most anticipated games now. Um, so... That's amazing. Yeah, yeah uh, great reveal. Uh, 
yeah, and like it, it seems so clever. The gunplay seems really good, uh, and I'm just excited to see more of this game. So uh, give it to me. Yeah, and uh, me just just to, quick, to mention really quick, we're not going in chronological order. I'm kind of going for uh, pacing better. Um, so if you're following along and anything we have posted, we're skipping some stuff. Yeah, we're skipping a little bit. We're kind of just doing the highlights, but. Um, so they announced a new IP it's called Gods and Monsters. It's from the team behind mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, this game's uh, a smaller game, and it goes into Greek mythology. Uh, the graphics, uh, I've got mixed emotions on. I think the environments look really pretty. I'm not sold in the character models quite yet, but uh, definitely... Probably could always be changed. Yeah, and it, it definitely looks exciting. Like, I'm, I'm interested. I want to see more from it. And it didn't look like a CGI trailer, at least, which was nice. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It might, might, it might be pre-rendered, but... It's a cinematic trailer. Yeah. It's a cinematic trailer. Yeah, no gameplay, but yeah. Um, and then it's coming... They, they showed at the end of the trailer, they showed uh, a PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and like a generic-looking box, which I think is just supposed to mean PC. So, I mean, that's cool. It's cool that it's coming out. Um, I could see myself getting this on Switch. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that looks cool. Um, they also announced another new IP. It's uh, Roller Champions. Um... It's a competitive yeah. multiplayer roller derby game with a uh, futuristic uh, kind of setting, and it's going to be free to play when it launches. So I mean, there's no reason not to check it out. Yeah, I mean, all you've got to lose is you know the time you spend checking it out. You don't have to spend any money. Um, that looks like it could be neat. So I'm looking forward to seeing more on that. Um, they showed um, off uh, Watch Dogs a little, or not? I'm sorry, not Watch Dogs. I mean uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint a little bit. Just by uh, yeah. reminding us that it's happening, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. Um, they showed, um, they reminded us of the, the release date, you know, October 4th. We already knew that, but they're yep. reminding us that hey, that's still happening. So, uh, for fans that are uh, of that, I'm excited for you. I'm kind of on the fence about. It. I'm probably gonna Yay. grab it because a friend of mine's getting it. But yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not particularly looking forward to it myself. Um, Yay. <laughs> so uh for assassin's creed odyssey they announced um it's getting a story creator um no, that's which, cool which is really cool you can design, design your own quest using a web-based tool um it's also out now for free in a, in a beta so that's neat and there's that's also sweet. a discovery mode just like we saw in uh origins which is kind of an educational mode which i think is really exciting I mean, it, you know it's optional you don't have to do it and it's fun getting um one thing that i think is uh, uh ubisoft does not get enough credit for with these games that they've done in these these mm. exotic settings and these uh just beautiful settings is they're really good at kind of recreating these worlds so it's kind of cool getting to just in its educational mode just kind of learn a little bit and also just kind of yep. walk around it without combat or anything you know so that's that's i'm on board for that i think that's a cool uh feature um they announced uh some more content coming for rainbow six siege which i'm i'm personally excited about i, I love rainbow six siege um uh, so they talked about that a little bit, um, some stuff coming out with that. And they also uh, teased the next Rainbow Six game, which is a co-op experience slated for next year called Quarantine. God. I'm, I'm personally, you know, I like Rainbow Six a lot, so I'm excited for that. But Ugh, Enough of the Tom Clancy game. Yeah, they I'm have so had done. a... Yeah. I'm so done. <laughs> I just, I just want to see Ubisoft Evolved. I want to see Rayman. I want to see Beyond, like more Beyond Good and Evil stuff. I, I just... Prince of Persia. Oh, yeah, I just feel like Prince they're kind of, of relying like, a lot on Tom Clancy, and that th- those just, are exciting oh. experiences. But I like, like you said, I do want Ubisoft to get back to that Rayman and Prince of Persia kind of creative, uh, yeah, part of them. Yeah. So um, they announced um, their uh, PC subscription service. Uh, it's called yep. Uplay, Uplay Plus. Uh, Chris and I aren't really sold on it. It's fifteen bucks a month. You do get over a hundred Ubisoft titles, including the DLC um, that launches September third. Uh, Game Pass is ten bucks a month on Xbox and PC, and you get it on Xbox and PC. Um, and, and EA EA is just yeah EA $5. access is five bucks a month or like thirty a year something Sorry. like that. So yeah. yeah, price point it's only on PC. Ugh, you know I, I like the concept. I was excited before they announced it's only in PC and the price. So hopefully, uh, competition from Game Pass and um, EA access uh, you know force them to put it on console and also lower the price. 
But something to mention maybe is that it might include like new games like Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Watch Dogs Legion. And um, I'm seeing that in the thumbnail for the video. I'm sorry, I, I only skimmed through the Ubisoft conference because I heard it was boring. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, please let please let me know, Josh, if I'm wrong. No, I I, <laughs> I, I, I watched and listened to it, and um, yeah, I, it, 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 even if every announcement was exciting, the presentation just wasn't as exciting. And then on top right. of that, there were less uh, exciting announcements too. So it was definitely my least uh, favorite conference. Um, devo- but it might, it might be worth dipping into the Uplay subscription. Uplay Plus, I think it's called, yeah. yeah. Um, and just dipping in for like a few months and just trying it out. And, it's definitely uh, a great deal if you primarily play you on PC and haven't played a lot of their games. Because, I mean, Ubisoft yeah. does have a robust library. In fact, that was the complaint Chris and I had a minute ago was they've got all these other cool things that I want them to tap into again. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, here they are. You can check out a lot of their, you know, great... I mean, in the, in just in the, in the little thumbnail in the video... You could see Trials Fusion, Beyond Good and Evil, Rainbow Six Vegas 2, you know, uh, Rayman Legends, um, Splinter Cell Blacklist. I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. They've got so many great games. So um, I'll probably at least check it out for a month just so I can report on it on the show. Um, so I'm going to go over these next things kind of quick before we jump into Square Enix. Um, of course, the new Just Dance was announced. Um, they also... Um, Announced the division, the movie for the division coming to Netflix, which I'm cautiously, op- you know, optimistic for because I like the division games and uh, it 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 has an interesting setting that could work well for film, and um, yeah, it's coming to Netflix. So I mean, Netflix has a good track record for content. So um, and then they also announced. I'm actually really excited for this. The creator of It's Always Sending Philly, uh, Rob McElhenney, um, has a comedy series coming out. And it's about game development. It's called Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. And they showed a little bit of like footage. I don't know if it's like promo footage or from the actual show. It looks like it's probably just kind of a promo spot. But it kind of showed the characters interacting and it, it looks it looks funny. It's it's a it's a you know, it's a mockumentary kinda kinda thing. Yeah. So if you're into the office But it doesn't or, belong at E three. I don't think it, it belongs at E three, no. And oh. I think if it was going to be E three, then they could have had like a ten second teaser instead of I don't know, it yeah. felt like five, ten minutes they spent on it. It spent Way too long on it, if they were going to talk about it, E3. And um, I don't think I need to remind anybody, um, ever since Xbox One's reveal, we've made it very clear that we don't really want to hear about TV shows and and, <laughs> and movies too much at, at game conferences. So we've been burnt before. Um, so yeah, that was, I mean, again, just thought, I just touched, we just touched on the highlights. Um, so Ubisoft didn't have too much to talk about, but I mean, the footage for Watch Dogs... Uh, Legion looks fantastic, and uh, there's a little bit of excitement in a couple of the announcements. Just definitely not one of the uh, most exciting shows. So jumping right into Square show, Square Enix show uh, was a lot. Yes. Better. So now that's a show. Yeah, that is a show. Yeah, right there. Lots of good stuff. <laughs> um, so again, we're just kind of touching on the highlights here, but I mean the highlights here at least I think all all fantastic. This was a great show. Um, mm-hmm. Right off the bat, I want to say the presentation itself was better too. Ubisoft was kind of flat in most parts. Pacing was rough. Pacing was great yeah. here. The, the show was a lot more exciting. Um, so we finally got a long-awaited confirmation on Avengers a couple days ago when they announced they'd be talking about it. You know, it was rumored to be in development forever. Well, we finally got to see some gameplay for it, and it was re- very refreshing not to just get a, a CGI trailer. Um, you'll get to play as Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, and Iron Man. Um... They don't look like they do in the movies, but they do uh, look like the characters still, I think. Uh, just a different take on them. Uh, great voice talent, too. Troy Baker and Nolan North are playing uh, Bruce Banner and Tony Stark. Yeah. Um, Square Enix also said this, which I think this is a perfect ga- uh, kind of game for this. They said they're going to release content for the game over multiple years. It's going to have four-player online co-op. And every new character and map added to the game will be free. And they said no, quote, random loot boxes or pay-to-win scenarios, end quote, which is very fantastic to hear. It would have been very, very, very easy to have a very uh, consumer uh, abusive games of service. Uh, yeah. like games of service can be fine, but I'm saying they could have had an abusive uh, take on that, kind of like uh, initial uh, Battlefront 2 um, 
with this kind of IP because this IP is going to sell like gangbusters. Yeah, I'm I'm delighted like about that. Yeah, very and, excited. Uh, um, I would like I, I do want to say though that we're um, we're taking this from Chris Kola, um, who is a writer on Kotaku. So uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, great reporting from Chris. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also I want to throw this out there too. Um, this is coming to Xbox, PlayStation Four, PC, and Stadia. So uh, it didn't they didn't announce it. For, they did not announce it for Switch, but it is cool that it's coming to you know xbox and playstation 4 and pc and then also hey you know it'll be on stadia too which stadia looks like it could be a a cool thing that will pull in people that may not traditionally play on console or pc and this is this is the game to do that you know i think this will do really well on stadia and uh something else i'd like to mention as well is that there's going to be playstation exclusive content Uh, and one theory i have no 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 wait 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 this is about to get hype insomniac spider-man could be a character for as DLC <laughs> for exclusive content, and then like having like the Avengers connect with Spider Man from this Insomniac would yeah, be that could amazing. Be cool. Yeah, or maybe even just I, a, like a Marvel gaming yeah. universe, a Marvel gaming universe. That would be cool. I I, be I can't sick. I'm not gonna try to hide it. I don't like uh, yeah platform exclusive content, but right. Yeah, that could at least be cool. Um. But it makes sense because that's a that's an exclusive character for Sony, right? So I, I kind of like that idea. Yeah, yeah, it, um, it, is, it is a kind of nice fan service for an available character. So yeah, that is cool. And they kind of look like the same kind of art style and graphics style. Mm, um, yeah, that's true. So that's that 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 gives credence to my theory. I think a little bit. Let, let me know if I'm crazy. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so Final Fantasy VII remake is was confirmed to still be episodic. Um. The first installment, though, is launching March 3rd, and that will include the Midgar portion of the original game, which has been greatly expanded upon. Um, it's going to take up two Blu-ray discs. Now, Chris, I wasn't... I, I is, is that two, two Blu-ray discs just for that part of the game, or is that the entire game? So, yeah, so... Each part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to be a full Final Fantasy experience. It's going to be uh, deep... Uh, reimagining of the Final Fantasy Seven, re- uh, Final Fantasy Seven story, and I think it's going to be more open. Like you can explore more parts of Midgar. Cool. So uh, it's going to be kind of like the the episodic stuff we've seen with games combined with the traditional kind of AAA format. So that's yeah. Cool. Okay. But I, I I but I also think it's gonna it's gonna like I've said this before, but it's like the Final Fantasy Thirteen trilogy that that continues the saga. And I think Final Fantasy VII is going to have that, and it's going to have changes to Final Fantasy VII uh, that will be interesting, and uh, it will, while it will still be um, relative to like the original mm-hmm. story, it is going to expand it way more than uh, previously. Okay, yeah, yeah, that could be really cool. Um, if they're Wow, they're already expanding. It'd be kind of cool if Crisis Core showed up because I remember playing that in PSP and I enjoyed that. Yeah, I, not not in the middle of the game, even though you know um, I don't know I don't remember where it takes place story wise, but I'm saying that'd be kind of a cool DLC thing or something. Um, yeah. So speaking of Final Fantasy, they're also uh, remastering Final Fantasy VIII, which is fantastic because we haven't seen that in a very long time. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. I don't think we've seen that since it originally released, have we? Uh, I'm not. sure. Sh- Sure, I don't think so. Um, I don't think it's been an Android release or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't so, think yeah, we've I seen that. It's the first time, and uh, I think the models have been remastered a bit more than previous Final Fantasy ports. So uh, this is this is pretty great to see, and it's going to be on PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and PC. Great, great. That'll be cool, and it'll be nice to be able to, you know, have that show up on uh, modern systems because that's it's it's you know it's been a long yeah. time. So that'll be cool. Um, it's especially nice getting to see all these old RPGs show up on the Switch. You know, that's a really great way to play them. Yeah. Um, so, Romancing Saga 3 is leaving Japan, and will be available over here. Um, it's for a, the first time. Yeah, yeah. for the first Which time. Which is crazy. Uh, it's a classic uh, SNES uh, game, and it's uh, getting remade with original pixel art, and it's coming to PS4, Vita, Switch, PC, Xbox One, Vita. iOS, and Android. Yeah. Wow, Vita game. It feels, it feels weird saying that, but it's great. Joseph's like, yes! I mean, that'd be the game, right? Yeah. Vita games! So that's great. Yeah, that'll be fun. And, I mean, that'll be a good platform to play it on, a Switch, Switch or Vita, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Saga Scarlet Grace is also finally leaving Japan and coming over here. 
Um, it's uh, the latest release in Square's Saga RPG series. Um, cool. It came out in Japan on the Vita years ago, but now it's coming over here on Switch, PS4, Steam, iOS, and Android. Um, it's uh, interesting. It's not on Vita. Yeah, I was just gonna say I it's a bummer that's not. Going to, I mean, since it was originally on the Vita over there, it's kind of bummer it's not going to the Vita over here. It's kind of strange. But yeah, at least it's on the Switch, so at least you can still play it portable in some way. Um, and you could always play to remote play on PS4 and lie to yourself yeah. from your bedroom on your Vita. You could tell yourself you're playing on the Vita. <laughs> Even though you're not, but you know, there you go. Uh, okay, so Outriders is a new shooter coming out. It's from People Can Fly. Just a reminder for who they are, they created Bulletstorm. Um, yeah. They also worked on Gears of War Judgment, which um, I can tell you as a Gears of War fan, Judgment was really fun. Wasn't like the best in the series, but it was a solid game I really enjoyed playing. Um, and P- uh, Bulletstorm was pretty great too. This is a one to three player cooperative shooter. And um, Square Enix called it a, quote, journey across a dark and desperate sci-fi world in search of this source of a mysterious signal. So that's pretty great. Um, it's um, coming summer 2020. And uh, they also, they're going to talk more about the game later this year in the winter, uh, you know, around yeah. the winter time. And it's going to be an Xbox One, PS4, and PC. I um, hope I don't get the pronunciation wrong on this. Onan, Onanaki. That's uh, the latest game yeah, from. I, I do. I do want to talk about Outriders a oh, bit. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's it's lo- it's a bit disappointing that there's a CG trailer for it, but um, I did appreciate the behind the scenes footage where um, they were talking about their love of shooters and how they want this to be a really cool open world game. Um, I, I think this 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 looks pretty great, and the uh, setting looks really great. Promise yeah. with Outriders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it... I kind of got Birdlands vibes from it, to be honest. Yeah, a bit. yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me, too... Uh, maybe it's just the three players. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of Evolve, except for, you know, it'll be better mm. than Evolve. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that game looks really cool. I'm definitely going to pick that up. I probably will end up picking it up on PS4 to play with you and Joseph, unless there's cross-play, then I'll just yeah. get an Xbox. But, um, yeah, so that game looks good. Yeah. Um, like, Do you want to skip the next few? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's been a, there's, there's, guys. This is a, this is a, this is a really good. Uh, I almost called it a direct. I'm used to Nintendo Direct. <laughs> this is a really good uh, a presentation. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. Um, I do want to briefly mention Onanaki really fast though, because that's from the makers of okay. I Am Setsuna, and I thought that was a fun game. I played it on the, not, I didn't finish it, but I played a lot of that in the Switch. But that was also originally on PS4, um, and they also did Lost Sphere, which I think is on PS4 and Switch. I know it's on Switch, but yeah. So that could be interesting. It's from Tokyo RPG Factory. Um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition is coming out on, <laughs> excuse me, PS4 and Switch. And I'm very excited about it. And the... um, mobile phones. Oh, interesting. Which is crazy. The biggest reason I'm excited for that is because the original way you had to play that was with a bunch of Game Boy Advances and a GameCube, which was a really cool concept back in the day but i mean that's that's you know not as easy to do now yeah it's really hard to yeah do i mean now. you got to get a bunch of friends together you got to get a bunch of game boy advances you have to get the cables you have to get the system and the, it's just yeah. it's nice this is coming out on switch and ps4 and you can play it online and as well as local i believe so that's pretty great yeah really cool um i'm i might double dip on that i know i'll get it on switch but i could see myself getting it in ps4 to like play with you if um you know, if you're getting yeah. PS4 too. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, the last Remnant Remastered um, was released for PS4 at the end of last year, um, but it's also available uh, uh, as of the day it was, you know, um, the day of the conference, which was uh, yesterday, June 10th. But, yeah, that's available now on um, Switch. That's pretty exciting. I feel so bad for the Xbox audience because that was originally an Xbox 360 game and they still haven't had the remastered uh, version of it yet. So like, it doesn't make sense to me that it's on Switch before Xbox, but hey, pretty cool, I guess. So the last remnant didn't really stand out to me, so I don't know. Yeah, it's if not you, something like that, that game. I'm, cool. I'm not personally interested in it. I remember um, it was on 360, and like I remember I had some friends that were playing it. Um, but um, yeah, I mean I'm happy. It, it, I like seeing RPGs come to Switch. So yeah, that's uh. That aspect is definitely exciting, but um, yeah, it would be cool if it came out on Xbox as well. I uh, I'm actually looking it up because I'm curious. I want to check really quick. 
if that's backwards compatible because if that's the case then that's then oh yeah then, then that would be fine yeah what's the point but i don't know if it is i'm just checking in case anyone listening is wondering um uh, let me see hmm. no i just when i started to type in rem some stuff for you know remnant some stuff popped up but that was for uh, lost uh, planet extreme conditions or whatever <laughs> whatever i forgot about lost planet so yeah, it doesn't look like it is backwards compatible. I don't think anyway. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised because yeah. there's like over 600 backwards compatible games, and I'm surprised that's not one of them. But um, yeah. So that's cool that that's out on the uh, Switch though. That's definitely a um, a game that should you know would benefit from being on Switch. I love all these RPGs being on the Switch. So. Um, Moving on uh, to the next announcement, they also announced some more content for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, it's called yeah. Remind. Chris, you want to go and talk about that? I don't know much about Kingdom Hearts. Sure. So we have some more playable characters this, uh, towards the end of the game. It's so like Roxas and... Uh... Ah. Yeah. So we have more uh, playable characters towards the end of the game, like Roxas and Aqua. Um, and we've there's some um, story elements uh, towards like Luxord and what his real identity is. And um, I'm not too excited about it actually. Uh, it doesn't seem that interesting of a huh. uh, interesting, yeah, that interesting to me. Um, I'm not that uh, engaged with the lore of. The, the past <laughs> like with the with the union cross stuff and uh, the law from the mobile games so it's just kind of losing me a little bit uh, and i'm not that fascinated with the organization 13 members so it, uh yeah so it's DLC a little bit of a bummer it's kind of an update like type dlc it's a paid DLC. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of going to be like the final mix stuff. But I think there's more to come for with Remind. I think we'll see some secret bosses. We're going to see some new additions, like maybe a new world. I don't know. Um, but uh, there's definitely some things in the story that they could, they could make better. Uh, especially uh, a lot of fans were actually mad about Kyrie. Because once again, like, like they, they, what what happened was is that they were building her up to be, um, like one of one of the gang, you know, what one of the people who were actually uh, one of the Keyblade builders and one of the Guardians of Light. Okay. And they really messed it up <laughs> because she, once again she was the damsel in distress, mm. and that upset a lot of people. Um, and I, I'm one of them. I, I think like Kyrie could have been uh, a great character with much more depth to her and it's just disappointing what they did in the original game so I hope Remind has uh, more Kyrie stuff in there to make her more of a fully fledged character rather than the <laughs> the damsel um, but yeah right, Remind I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it uh, this trailer really didn't like make me happy <laughs> and there's, there's no it felt a bit lazy as well because there wasn't any voice acting in it. It was all text mm-hmm. <laughs> as they were talking. So it was, it was, it felt like a rush job and it, it, like it just, yeah, n- nothing really enticed me about what's coming up for Kingdom Hearts 3. Well, you're like the Kingdom Hearts guy for me. So like if, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if yeah, yeah. you're not interested in something or you're even just not only like a little interested in it, that, that, that tells me it's probably not going to be, you know. That great. A Playboy Roxas is cool in Kingdom Hearts 3, but that's about it for me right, right now. Well, overall, though, it was definitely a great show. Um, I would encourage yeah. everyone to go check out that Final Fantasy 7 remake tra- uh, gameplay. The combat is looks really cool. It's a hybrid of like turn-based yep. and action RPG. It looks fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Um, and uh, the episodic thing, uh, when they first said that, I was kind of like, like I'm talking like way back when they said they were doing that. I was a little um, hesitant, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it. But that the fact that they're like developing these areas uh, in such great detail, uh, and and like Chris said, maybe it's going to just be um, like Final Fantasy thirteen, thirteen two, that kind of thing. Yeah. that makes me very excited. So um, that release about that press release about it being episodic was a big mistake. They they should have communicated that much better. They should have kept that trying... in their pocket for like until later. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think it's going to be a big thing they have to overcome uh, over the next few months, yeah. just to yeah. make sure people know, yes, it's a fully-fledged game, it's not 10 hours long, it's not short. Mm-hmm. Um, I think even Jason Schreier was mentioning that he was worried about it just being in Midgar and uh, yeah. not being expansive, but I'm... So, yeah, that just tells you... <laughs> uh, um, how much they've dropped the ball if, if Jason Schreier is even... <laughs> yeah, and he, he loves JRPGs. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, let's move on to the games that uh, we think uh, are were missing in action. Yeah, because uh, we had a lot of great shows, but there were still a couple things that were missing for both of us. Um, Chris, why That's don't a you... lot of stuff. Yeah. Chris, why don't you go over what, what you were hoping to see that we didn't get to see? Okay. So first thing was the Avatar project. It was announced back in February 2017. It's not event uh, Avatar the Last Airbender. It's Avatar, you know, James Cameron's Avatar. And uh in February 2017 they announced that uh the, the makers of uh The Division uh Massive Entertainment are making a new adaptation of that uh film. Or that that world, uh, they're working with Lightstorm Entertainment and Fox Next Games, uh, and I'll just I'll just describe uh, what they've mentioned on the official website here. So uh, they're embarking. Uh, so uh, in the world of Avatar, we are embarking on an amazing journey uh, to the world of Pandora, developing a new cutting edge game set on the beautiful and dangerous moon from the prominent Avatar film franchise. And this game, just like the Division, will be using the Snowdrop engine. So um, it could be a really beautiful game. And we still haven't seen anything of it. So I thought that was quite interesting to see, especially with um, Avatar news coming out very recently. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what's what's your what's the first game you thought was missing in action and needed to be at E3? Uh, Metroid Prime 4, and I know they delayed it. You know, and they said that they're like starting over, but I still would have liked to have seen, I don't know, even just like a glimpse. Like, I, I would have been, yeah. I would have been happy with just even like, just a. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I would have been happy with the CGI trailer, just like reminding, <laughs> just, just reminding us, like, hey, we're still working on this. You know, we love Metroid. We know you do too. I don't know, um, but yeah, or I mean, concept art or something, just, just to something. just to get people to to just to let us know what the hook yeah. or, hook is yeah. with Metro Prime Four and what their direction is. So, but maybe they even don't know about that because it was yeah. might have been. I mean, with them starting scrapped. development over, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't even like get a release date until. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not released till twenty twenty one. So I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see footage until like you know next year sometime. So yeah, that was a bummer, but I know it's gonna happen. I'm at least happy they're making it. So. Uh, so my next game is Babylon's Fall, uh, which is a game from Platinum uh, Games, who are the makers of Bayonetta and uh, Near Automata. Uh, so yeah, this was going to be a Square Enix title uh, that kind of looked like it featured co-op gameplay. It had a CG trailer last year, but we've seen nothing of it, so that the world seems interesting. And it's kind of a bummer that we haven't seen more of this, but you know, Platinum Games are so busy, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not surprised that it hasn't shown up, but it would have been cool to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, what, what was your next one? This, this is from Microsoft, right? Yeah, my next one was uh, Fable 4. Um, they've all but confirmed it's happening, you know. Um, they've discussed how... It's... But that's, that's, that's Phil Spencer on the phone. <laughs> He's going to talk to you about Fable oh, 4. Oh, man, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, it hasn't been officially confirmed, but it's, it's kind of leaked that it's happening. So, um, yeah, I, I wish, I wish it was at E3, even if it was just a, like a logo announcement, you know, just confirming its existence officially, kind of like Bayonetta 3, you know, Metroid Prime 4 were, you know, for Nintendo, uh, in 2017 yeah. and, uh, whatnot. So yeah, um, that was a bummer, but I'm sure we're still going to get it. Um, yeah, especially since they could they have just, just show the logo. Yeah, even just if, the logo. Even if they just that... Did that. Yeah. <laughs> especially since they recently, um, out of the blue, um, did Xbox One um, X uh, updates um, for Fable. Um, 
I'm trying to remember which ones. I think it was Fable Two and yeah, Fable Two and Fable Three. Um, so that that was like a month or two ago when they did that, and so that kind of made everybody go like, oh my gosh, are they going to be, you know, talking about this, you know, Fable Four at all? Just because it came out of the blue. I mean, they do Xbox One X and Xbox One like update free updates for games, you know, quite a bit, just making them look a little bit better and whatnot. But like, it was just the fact that Fable Two and Fable Three both happened the same day out of nowhere that made people kind of, you know, talk. But yeah, I'm sure it'll still happen. I'm hoping that will. They did. They did confirm the Xbox uh, experience. Um, XO twenty nineteen is happening this year. It's happening in London. Um, yeah. So maybe we will hear about it uh, then. And the other. Well, it makes sense because that's an English game. Yeah, and especially since the. Uh, studio that's rumored to be working on it is um, Turn 10. Or no, not Turn yeah. 10. I'm sorry. Playground. Yeah, Playground. Playground, games. Playground yeah. is in the UK as well. So that, you know. Yeah. That make that kind of... Oh, no, actually. Yeah, no, it is. That's right. Yeah, they do Forza Horizon and um, they're, con- they're, they're... I mean, they're in the UK. So I would be surprised if they had people from Playground come out and announce it. So... Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping it happens then. Uh, so what you got next, Chris? Uh, it's another English game, uh, Rocksteady, uh, and their next project. We don't know what's going on with it. Wasn't it rumored uh, to be Superman? I don't, not announced, but was it, it was, it was. It's been rumored to be a Superman game. It's been rumored to be a Suicide Squad game. There's been rumors about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Man, I'll take any uh, of those, you know? Yeah, yeah, me too. Especially from Rocksteady, uh, because they, they, I mean, the Batman games are so great. Yeah, I don't think Superman would, would make for a great game, uh, but... Yeah, I think Rocksteady's new project would be really interesting. I think maybe they're waiting for the next generation now and, uh, you know, just work on development for that instead. I think they tweeted um, out, too, that they didn't have anything to talk about right now. So Yeah, they had nothing. Sefton Hill, I, I, uh, yeah, he's, so. who's at uh, Rocksteady, he said that there's nothing to show. And he said that the, sa- said the same thing at the Game Awards. So they... They know it's anticipated. Yeah, I think they're trying uh, to keep everybody calm, like, you know, <laughs> that way they don't lead anybody on yeah. uh, need, you know, <laughs> needlessly, you know. Yeah, and I, I think it could be really exciting to see what they mm-hmm. what they work on next, but other than that, I have nothing else to say. I just think it's dis- it's kind of disappointing we didn't see it, and it's kind of weird that Warner Brothers has kind of, like, disappeared from E3 this year, so... Um, yeah, I'm surprised yeah. they didn't have a, a kind of presence at all. I mean, not, nothing. I didn't have anything. Yeah, they didn't so, even like talk about Mortal Kombat like content or anything, you know. No, no, they there's nothing there. But yeah, what's uh, what's the last one you have there? Uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy HD. I especially, I mean, this hasn't even been like officially confirmed. It's just Nintendo's. They they have they they like to update games and you know put them on newer systems. They've done that you know numerous times with not only Wii U ports but even like you know other other um games and other series kind of like uh you know they put pikmin one and two in the wii and stuff like that and they put metroid prime one and two from the uh gamecube to the wii with the newer and, and i'm gonna say it better controls so a lot of people were kind of <laughs> expecting this to maybe happen especially with prime four being delayed um i still think it's going to happen i just you know we, they, we didn't get anything today so maybe they'll announce it during treehouse or maybe they'll announce it later in the year but um that would be a incredible holiday release um, the year before Prime 4 comes out. So if Prime 4 comes out in 2021, they could even have, you know, um, the Prime Trilogy come out, you know, uh, holiday, you know, 2020 or something. But There's a lot going on in 2019 for Nintendo, so um, I'm not surprised that Metro Prime Trilogy hasn't been announced yet, if it is anything at all. Um, I think it's just coming out next year. Yeah. Uh, just to fill that, a space or like a development space that they haven't got yet because yeah. they have Fire Emblem, they have Marvel, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, they have um, Astral Chain, they have Zelda. They, there's, there's so much. Yeah. Uh, they have Pokemon. There's so much. There. Damn it, I'm going to say um, it. It's not even in our show notes, but I really wanted, uh, I really want other Zelda games on the Switch so bad. Like Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. Yeah. Put them on yeah, the yeah. Switch. And I Sky will pay full price. Yeah. yeah. Put them all on there. Mm-hmm. The Zelda mm-hmm. series is. Even if it's not your favorite series, I think everyone can agree it's among like their top five, fran- you know, IPs. Yeah. And there's no reason that Mario and Zelda should not be like playable. Like, for at least most, mostly every single game in the series should be not be playable on the Switch. You know, it's so annoying that like, these games are stuck on the Wii U. It's really annoying to see like the this remaster 
these remasters just go the waste. The Wind Waker HD remaster is perfect. It's so, yeah. so damn good. Yeah. And every time I see people, like, showing it off on, like, PC, you know, like, like an uh, where the emulation where they're able to, you know, like, have it, like, in 4K and stuff. I know the Switch is in 4K, but it's just it's just another reminder to see this, like, beautiful game that I want to be able to play on Switch. So. And I'd love to play it portably, like oh, those games. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'd probably lose my job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be in the bathroom playing Wind Waker on my Switch. So, uh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'll just briefly mention these two games. So Harry Potter, um, the new pro- the, the that new project uh, based like yeah we had footage leaked out uh, of it like a yeah year ago. Uh, footage got leaked out a year ago I believe and we still haven't seen anything and that from it. Really cool too. It looked really cool. It was a Harry Potter RPG yeah, set in like the early ages, yet. like like set like years and years before the events of the books and yeah. the movies. Uh, in Hogwarts, and that universe is seemed really right to be a great RPG, you know? Yeah. They have kind of milked Harry Potter to me, and that's kind of been disappointing to me. Um, like, the last Fantastic Beasts movie was awful. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, I like, hopefully I like this game can bring it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the first one was good, but the second one, yeah, just really made me think, rethink about my 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 uh fandom to uh harry potter yeah hopefully the next uh, one's a lot better because yeah yeah and i'd also like to mention the new monolith uh, soft rpg uh we haven't seen anything from it this year uh and it's uh, i don't know it was kind of expected to be shown at e3 but we haven't so maybe it could be tokyo game show could be something like that that yeah. we see it um, and Monolith Soft are the makers of Xenoblade, and they've been they've also helped with uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, and they've also helped with uh, the development of uh, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. So <laughs> they're Breath of the Wild. So yeah, um, those are the games that I wish were at uh, E3, but we're missing in action. Yeah, the nice thing is, even with these games, unfortunately not making an appearance, we do have. Way too many games <laughs> coming out this year. <laughs> there's, there's way too many games. Next year. Yeah. yeah, so it's crazy. On one it's hand, I'm kind of happy to hear about like The Last of Us Part Two being delayed and and stuff like you know stuff not showing up at E3. Like I'm just a little happy because it's like I don't have to stress as much about trying to manage my time with just the. Do you think they'll push Last of Us? Do you think they'll push Last of Us again to summer? Um, just like the just like the Last Last of Us, the first one. I don't know. I I, I think because. Early 2020 is crazy. Absolutely nuts. I hope they don't because that'll be a good time period because yeah, as of right now, it's not too crowded then. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's Naughty Dog. They can release a game whenever they want and like the world stops and listens, you know? So <laughs> they, they can release it whenever they want. I don't think they'll have to worry about competition. So I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. I want it to release when it's ready and I don't want people to have to crunch even though I know they're crunching but i want as little crunch as possible crunch i mean crunch, i want <laughs> i want i want no crunch but um i know from reading uh blood sweat and pixels by jason shire which is an incredible book if you haven't read it yet um when they the chapter on uncharted 4 um man the crunch that naughty dog does is unreal um is it yeah uh bruce straley who was uh one of the um co-directors um with Neil Druckmann on The Last of Us and also on Uncharted 4, he got an apartment that was, like, 30 minutes closer to Naughty Dog's, like, studio <laughs> when they were working on Uncharted 4. And, like, it sounds ridiculous, no. but he said it literally helped him get more sleep because it was, like... I shouldn't laugh at that. That's, I shouldn't. Isn't that awful, though? Like, he got a... He had, he had some more to live, like, with his wife and kids. Yeah. But he's like, man, I'm going to get this apartment that's, like, you know, half as far It's just from ridiculous. Where, yeah. It's ridiculous. But he said it helped him get more sleep because it cut down his commute just a little bit. Oh which, yeah, God. Added up to an extra hour of sleep a day probably, which is insane. That, like, it made that <laughs> much of a, you know. But, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I would be, I mean, I'd be happy if they just delayed it if it means people don't have to get apartments and <laughs> stuff like that because that's oh. real. But, um, yeah, so uh, lots of great shows. Um, don't forget to keep your eyes and ears out for a Nintendo Treehouse across the next few days because... Nintendo did say they're going to be announcing some more stuff. Um, 
I, I don't think they confirmed anything specifically, but they said they'll have some more stuff. I think it's probably mostly yeah. going to be indies. And then also, I wouldn't be surprised if PlayStation, even if they're not massive announcements, I wouldn't be surprised if they announce at least, you know, some medium or small announcements, um, just, you know, on YouTube, like they've done with a couple of little things here and there. So, um, but yeah, thank you everybody for checking out our coverage across all the conferences. Um, I'm sure we'll end up having a best of or worst of type uh, rundown, yeah. and we'll also have some fun coverage uh, from Joseph on Sunday, I'm sure, when we record next yeah. episode, because he was at E3 and got to play a lot of stuff and check a lot of stuff out. So, and hopefully he's got um, a secret confirmation of Alan Wake 2 for me. That he pride, <laughs> pride from the minds of Remedy, because, oh my god, I want it. Yeah. Um, one more quick reminder. Um, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of great sales right now on Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch right now. Uh, both uh, in retail uh, and digitally on Xbox One and PS4. I don't think that Nintendo's sales are physical. I think it's just, like, you know, digitally in the eShop. But, um... I mean, there's, like, Mario Odyssey and stuff like that for, like, 40 bucks, which Nintendo games, like, never... I still remember seeing Breath of the Wild on sale for $55 on Black Friday and being like, really, Nintendo? That's your Black Friday sale? Like, for a game that came out, like, a year... I mean, this was last year, so this is, like, a year after... A year and a half after the game release. But anyway, lots of good sales um, on, uh, on all three platforms. I saw some crazy good sales um, on Xbox One and uh, PS4, and the Nintendo sales are re really good for Nintendo, uh, just not as deep as uh, Sony and Microsoft sales. And then uh, also just a random re kind of tidbit, um, among the last batch of Xbox's uh, backwards compatibility games, um, before they move on to making all of those playable on Xbox Scarlet, um, they did announce uh, one last batch, and one of those games is Too Human, and that game's actually free to download, so... Definitely go get that because it's free. Um, and you might want to check it out sometime. But yeah, lots of good sales, uh, lots of good announcements. Uh, all in all, I think uh, we got some great announcements uh, across these last few conferences, even even across the conferences that may not have been as good. I think every conference at least had something worthwhile, which is which is nice. No Bethesda. <laughs> oh, dude, that, that, that footage for Doom Eternal, though, that trailer was so good. Oh, I you guess, don't like Bethesda, I though, guess. do you? Not they're, not they're not your favorite. <laughs> oh, and uh, Shinji Mikami announced a new game. That's true. And I, I but at the same time, CG. <laughs> yeah, Stop true, it. true. But, Stop it, man. Also, man, Bethesda's got like some of the most passionate fans ever. Did you watch any of their conference? Oh, they were annoying, dude. People were like, they were so annoying and yelling and clapping, and it was, it was, uh, it, 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 the, the only fans that might be slightly bigger than Bethesda fans are Keanu Reeves fans. Yeah, yeah. People went wild. That, that was, that's the one thing I'd say about E3 is that the crowd audiences were just annoying as hell. Like the one during Square Enix was was like kind of distracting from yeah, the trailer. Yeah, it like, can be. Oh, um, when we were trying stop to, it. my wife and I were watching the Final <laughs> Fantasy VII trailer last night, and it was like I can't hear the trailer. Yeah, <laughs> over over people. I know you're excited, but come on. Uh, there's a really good balance between being hyped and like you know listening. You know. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, all in all, a great year. I'm looking forward to um, XO19, uh, 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 Xbox's next conference in London. Um, Chris, is PlayStation going to have a PlayStation experience this year? No, I don't think so, so far. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we hear from PlayStation in, about, in a few weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, hopefully they do because, um, you know, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I know that they may not have any, like, crazy big announcements, but hopefully they still do at least, you know, maybe PlayStation Experience that could announce a couple. If I, if I was, if I was Sony, and uh, I would prepare a Horizon tease. Oh, yeah, because they've, it's kind of I, been a That's what I would do. Sequel. Yeah. That's, that's what I would do. Like, I'd do a, a, a usual uh, state of play in two weeks, and then, because of Halo Infinite showing, like, Okay, this is what the Xbox uh, Scarlet's going to look like. I do have to say that... <laughs> they need to re reply. They need to they do, do something. I and do. I think like if they show like a swooping kind of scene of like uh, Horizon's kind of like uh, visuals. Yeah. You know, like uh, a mountaintop or something and you see like the land below. That would, that would just be it. Like that's all you need. Yeah. I that's do want to yeah. say though that what I really want is a medieval conference. 
<laughs> just an hour of medieval. It could be an annual tradition. It could just be, uh, you know, medieval E3. And that's all they talk about. Yeah. Give me a Give medieval me game Ape Escape, you, Ape you Escape. cowards. Yeah. Ape Escape, you cowards. Give, give me it. <laughs> But all right, thank you everyone for stopping by. Um, if this is the only episode you've heard, we've got you know other episodes that have other coverage in case you want to get caught up uh, from Nintendo to Bethesda to Xbox. Um, so uh, other uh, good stuff that we talked about, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday for your regularly scheduled programming with 100% more Joseph Yaden. So yeah. all right, thanks everybody. Have a good night. Bye.